Hey guys, I get asked, whoo, whoo, I get asked quite a bit how I get started with the veto thinking game. And so just to be super clear, so no one thinks I'm stealing anything, I want to say that I originally saw this as a good choice, maybe. Um, the, I, an Agility Nation, Susan Garrett's Agility Nation, and I don't remember where she first heard about it. But I do a lot of videos with the veto thinking game because it is one of my favorite games. And so people ask me how I got started. So I'm just making this video to say how I trained, how I began training it, um, but understanding that I first heard about it from Susan Garrett's Agility Nation. Okay, so how I got started with two bulls on either side of me, my back against something so the dog cannot walk behind me. It doesn't matter if it's a wall or a couch, whatever. And I will, and I have just a, he already ate breakfast this morning, so I have a small meal here, and I'm gonna start him by putting some, get it, some treats in a bowl, some kibble in a bowl. The moment he makes, yes, the moment he makes motion towards the next bowl, I'll put food in there. So he doesn't have to start to walk over there. His head turning is good enough. And you would be at this stage for a day or so as they got very good. You see how now he's not just turning his head, now he's beginning to actually walk towards the other bowl. Very good. And so you may be here for a day or so until your dog has a lot of confidence to essentially bounce between the bowls. And you see that the hand, you're sort of like a Skinner box. The hand that's closest to the bowl is the one that's moving. Ultimately, the game should be played quietly. I'm talking because I'm talking to you. But, and I told him yes earlier, but you want to offer as little help as possible. So if I start this with a senior dog who has never been shaped before, I will offer a lot of assistance. Um, if I have a really dog who really lacks confidence, I will offer a lot of assistance. But a confident dog should be able to get to the point where they can bounce between the bowls effortlessly without any help from you at all. When they can do this, while they're occupied, I add an obstacle right in between us. And this obstacle is butted right up against me. And now, instead of making motion towards the bull, I want him to motion around the obstacle. What I would tell you is this was a really fast progression and you wouldn't want to do this unless you they were bouncing between the bulls confidently um, for like a day or two. What's happening now is called a stall out. He has stalled out. He's thinking if he takes really a long time again, if they're a senior dog, see, he didn't need any help. The idea is to get them thinking about it all on their own. So again, if he was a senior dog or a really insecure dog, I may have offered a lot of help to get around this obstacle, but the moment they figured it out, they figured it out, okay? And so then I would keep the cone here for a day or so. And then as they're confidently moving around the cone, you're going to inch it out. Like I cannot express like inching. Ooh, that was only one piece of kibble. You can have more than that. So I'm just going to push it out slightly. Still not enough room to cut in between me and the object. There really is I mean, he could if he wanted to walk across my lap, but ultimately, there's only one choice, and that's to go around the obstacle. Kiba also has resource guarding. We talked about this a lot in his videos, and this is a great way to enrich his mind show him that food comes directly from your hands. If you have a dog with resource guarding, like it's the ultimate form of hand feeding. And it's the ultimate slow feeder if you have a dog who wolfs down their food that you can't get them to slow down. Not to mention, you are very much involved. So it's great for relationship building. And we are in a winter chill advisory, so it's great for indoor stimulation. Good, I'm gonna inch it out a little bit more. So now there's a bit more of a chance to move between me and the obstacle, but not such a huge gap that it's still quite a choice. The going around is still an easier choice. So a cut through equals nothing. 
And now he has to think about why. So he goes around. Now that's the way he originally went. I will not reward that again. He has to continue on the correct path. Good. See so that? There we go. And he has never done this before. So another cut through. I will treat that, but I won't do it again if he cuts through and goes around again. He has to get the last stage correct, right? So there's going towards to the left, going to the right. Good. He has to get both of those steps correct. There we go. And since he's had a lot of failures, I won't push it out any further. It is probably three inches away from me. And I won't push it out any further today. This is his very first time ever doing the veto game. I and mean, we have never worked through stages. I wanted you to see what it looked like with a brand new dog, a dog who's never done it before. And so I won't inch it out any further. I mean, it's like that far away from me. That may have told you nothing. I don't know. And it is a long game. Most training sessions are at three to five minutes long. This one should be roughly 10 to 20 minutes long in complete and utter silence. So if you feel like, you know, this is a training session you're trying to end short, don't end it short. Let them, let them play. There is one last phase of the game that I never record and I never do because I don't quite understand it. So if someone out there knows the video game really well and wants to explain why this last phase happens, um, I'm open to hearing it. And that is at the end, I'm gonna let me go around one more time, good. At the end, you collect your dog and you put them in your lap and you hold them until they relax. And I'm not sure why this last part happens, so I never do it. If somebody tells me it's like uber important and I'm messing my dog up for not doing it because it feels horrible to hold on to them until they relax, Good boy. Okay, you're free. I'm not sure what that last part has to do with anything. So, here. Hey, but you want to finish that up? Good boy. But just for clarity and so that you can see the whole exercise, that's what happens at the end from the original developer. Um, I just don't ever do it. I just do the running around the obstacle and running around between the bowls. Okay, so that's how I get started with the veto exercise for those of you who have been asking how to get started.